Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Bia and I love makeup so you're going to find a lot of it on my channel. In today's video, I am bringing you one idea for a Valentine's Day makeup look which is this really gorgeous cool tone makeup. Before we jump right into the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also to leave this video a like because it's an amazing way of supporting me and helping me grow my channel. And also, if you are more of a pink and red lipstick kind of gal, I got you. I have a video on a date night makeup look, so in case you want to check it out, I will also leave it linked down below. But yeah, now it's time for the makeup tutorial, so let's go! I'm going to start by doing my eye makeup and the first product that I'm taking is my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I am using it to build a base for my eyeshadows. I think I don't ever mention this but I am using this in the shade Custard. To blend it as usual I am using my Beauty Blender. To set the concealer I am taking my Laura Mercier Translucent Powder and a large blending brush. This one is from Morphe and it's the M573. I apply just a little bit of powder just to make sure that the concealer is fully set. The main palette that I will be using to do this eye makeup look is this one from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And first I am going to start by taking Warm Top, which is this more of a cool brown. And using this brush from Morphe, which is the M573, the same one that I used to apply the setting powder on my eyes, I am going to start blending and applying this eyeshadow on my crease. When it comes to these eyeshadows, you can obviously build up the intensity if you want to, but I feel like I'm going to keep this really light and kind of simple. As you can see, I am also starting to build the outer V. Now taking the 231 from Zoeva, which is their Luxe Petite Crease, I am taking this darker brown eyeshadow, which is called Cypress Amber, and I am placing this eyeshadow on the outer part of my lid. I would say like the outer third of the lid. And to do that, I'm just tapping. And one good thing about applying it with this brush is that as soon as you tap it, like the brush kind of blends the eyeshadow. So it's like a two-in-one. When the brush has pretty much nothing left in it, I am blending this dark eyeshadow in the outer third of the crease. Just to make sure that there is no harsh transition between this darker eyeshadow and the lighter one on the crease. As I always say in every single one of my videos, I know, take your time blending because it is so worth it. Now using a clean blending brush, I am pushing the eyeshadows in the outer part of my eye outwards just to give my eyes a lift and make this a little bit more intense and dramatic. I am not pushing the eyeshadows too far, just a little bit. Before I move on to the glitter, since I want the glitter to be applied a little bit more sparsely, I am first going to apply a shimmer which color is kind of similar to the glitter and that one is called Primavera. I don't know how you pronounce this in English but in Portugal we read it Primavera. To apply it first I'm going in with my finger because I feel like applying shimmers with the finger increases like drastically the payoff of the shimmers. To reach the inner corner and to go a little bit more precisely closer to the crease I am taking this Morphe brush which is the M213. Now for glitter, I am taking this one, which is really, really gorgeous. It's from Musa Makeup and it's in the shade number two, called Athena. I love their glitters. You have seen me wearing them quite a few times on my channel. And that's because I genuinely love the brand. Their glitters are so, so amazing. They don't require glue to stay in place. They don't fall out. And I, the colors are amazing, the texture, everything, I just love them. And to apply it, I am using their brush. You have the tinier tip, but I am going to start by using the larger one, which is this one. To apply it, I am tapping the brush on the part of the lid that I have previously applied the shimmer. Doing these tapping motions instead of just sliding the brush really helps creating that sparse glitter application that I am really aiming for. I just love to combine shimmers with glitters because I feel like shimmers by themselves aren't dramatic enough for my personal taste and glitters just give them that final touch. It doesn't even have to be that much glitter, you know? But even the tiniest bit already makes a huge difference. The only part of the eye in which I tend to go a little bit more heavy hand with the glitter is the inner corner because I want to make sure that I have like a really big brightness in the inner part of my eye. 
I feel like this kind of eye makeup look really asks for an eyeliner and I am taking mine from Inglot in the shade 77. This is my favorite. It's the blackest of the black eyeliners and it stays on for hours and hours. And to apply it, I am using the brush 31T from Inglot as well. I've been loving to work with this kind of shaped brushes. So guys, I ended up going off camera just to finish doing my eyeliner because I really can't talk or even show you much while I do it because I need to be really close to the mirror because of my horrible sight. And I ended up also applying some false lashes. The ones that I'm using are the Wispies from Ardell. I love these lashes because first, they are super affordable and second of all, they are amazing. I feel like they look gorgeous. So yeah that's pretty much what i've done i still have to finish the work on my lashes you know curl them and apply mascara but while the lash glue is still drying we are going to start working on the complexion first i am taking my mac prep and prime natural radiance primer this is in the shade yellow i love this primer and to be honest for valentine's day i would want my skin to look really glowy i don't know i just feel like it's super cute <laughs> i feel like this primer is perfect for every skin type but especially if you have like drier skin because this is so hydrating and it's super comfortable it feels like you're just applying your moisturizer but it has like a luminous finish to it you know the foundation that i'm using today is one that i've never used on camera but it's actually one of my favorites and it's from mac it's the studio fix fluid i love this foundation so much and this is my second bottle and it's almost finishing but i know it will last i'm confident and even if it doesn't last i already have another one so we cool to apply the foundation i am using the same old brush the one from zoeva it's the 104 the buffer brush i love this brush for foundation application you guys know that it covers a lot of skin at a time it applies the foundation super evenly so the last time that i worn this foundation I was wearing a high neck and because of that I didn't notice that this is a little bit too dark for me right now but who cares the thing about me and foundations is that my skin doesn't tan evenly so my arms tend to go super dark while my face and neck and chest area is just completely like pale we're talking like white wall pale so what usually happens when i find a foundation that perfectly matches my face and my neck and everything i tend to look like a ghost because then the rest of my body is super thin but if i go a little bit darker i end up looking orange so we gotta choose so now that the foundation part is complete, I am now moving on to creamy bronzer. And no, I'm not forgetting about concealer, but this is something that I've been trying lately, like to switch orders in between those two products, because I saw another makeup artist do this. He felt like it is way too easy to go a little bit overboard with the creamy bronzer when it comes to the areas that I, you want to cover with it. And sometimes it kind of like steals the thunder of the highlighting technique that you are using with your concealer. And I felt exactly the same way. So I decided to give it a try and it works perfectly. I was so amazed by this little trick and I've been doing it lately and I feel like it's so much easier now to sculpt my face. So yeah, that is something that I definitely kept in store because I wanted to show you in this video and that's what we are about to do now. So for creamy bronzer, I am using the same old one, the one from Huda Beauty. This is in their Tentour Contour and Bronzer Cream and this is in the shade light. To apply it, I am using my OG. This brush is from Real Techniques, it's the 401 and it's their sculpting brush. To apply it, I just do this to know exactly where to place the product. I usually do tapping motions just because I'm applying creams on top of creams and I don't want to move the formulas that I've applied underneath. I always like to apply it on my jawline and I usually do this just to connect both parts of the contour. Now it's time to show some love to the forehead. So that is it for creamy bronzer. My skin is having a little bit of a situation right in between my brows. I don't know what's going on. I even did a mask yesterday, but it's flaking off. I don't know if it's from the cold. I don't know, but let's just ignore it. <laughs> 
So now for concealer, I am taking the NARS one, the one that I showed you right in the beginning of the video. I use this concealer in a few shades lighter than my skin, just because I want this to also highlight a certain parts of my face, along with giving some more coverage where I need it. As usual, I am applying this in the bridge of my nose. Just a tiny bit in the bottom part of my forehead. To be honest, I shouldn't even be applying too much product in this area because my skin is going crazy and applying more product is definitely not gonna help. Now I am again using my beauty blender to blend this. That is it for creamy formulas. Now moving on to powders. I am going to start by applying my Laura Mercier translucent powder to set my complexion. To apply the setting powder, I am starting by using the tapered blush brush from Primark. I'm not going over my cream contour. I usually prefer to set my cream bronzer with just a powder bronzer. I am still going to bake, so to bake the under eye area, I'm first going in with my beauty blender right in the creasing area, just to make sure that I blend any creases before I apply powder on top because once you apply the powder the deal is sealed to apply the powder that I'm going to use to bake I just take my damn beauty blender pick a large amount of powder and apply it I am going to let this bake for around like two to five minutes so in the meantime I am going to finish off doing my upper lashes and first I am taking my curler this one is from NYX and I am curling my false lashes with my natural lashes together because it obviously gives them the lift that the curler is meant to give and it also helps them blend together. This is not cute to see, I know. Now for mascara, I am taking my Better Than Sex waterproof mascara from Too Faced. I love doing zigzag motions because this really allows you to keep the lashes separate and I don't know, I just feel like it gives like a ton of volume. In length. That's enough baking for the under eye area, so I am now removing it with the same brush that I use to apply my setting powder. Going back to the same palette as I was using in the beginning of this video, I am taking Warm Taupe, which is the lighter brown that we used, and I am using the 234 brush from Zoeva. I'm just gently going to apply this right next to the lashes. Now using this tinier shaded brush from Morphe, this is the M210, I am taking the darker brown, the Cypress Umber. This time I am trying to stick the eyeshadow really really close to the lashes and only like in the outer part of the eye. To finish off the lower lash line, I am going in with the same mascara and I will be right back. Enough baking, so now I'm just removing all of the excess powder that I have on my face. For bronzer, I'm using my Hula from Benefit and the brush 04 from Sephora. One thing that I find really impressive about this brush is even though it is kind of dense, it blends the bronzer super easily. I apply the powder bronzer in exactly the same areas. I also try to diffuse any edges that I might have left with the cream one. For blush, I am taking the one that I have from NARS, the Orgasm shade. And to be honest, for a Valentine's date, I want my cheeks to look really rosy, really like I am actually blushed because I feel like it gives such a sweet look and I don't know, it, it just makes me feel really cute. And I didn't tell you guys, but I'm using my Japanese brush to apply it. That is it for blush. Before I go in with highlighter, I am going to first spray my face using my MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. And the reason why I always do this before a highlighter is because if your skin is humid, it will grab a lot more of the highlighter pigment, so it will make it more reflective and overall just more intense. Using this Morphe brush, this is from their Deluxe collection, I am taking some of my highlighter which is from Becca in the shade Moonstone and I am applying it in the high points of my face. For lips, I would probably go for a red lipstick on Valentine's Day but I feel like this eye makeup look is already kind of dark so I feel like for this makeup look in particular I am still going nude on my lips but a red lipstick would look just as good, so if you want to rock that red, vivid lipstick on Valentine's Day, go for it. But right now I have three shades in front of me and they're like nude pinks and I really don't know which one to choose. I always use this one, I love it, it's my favorite. But today I feel like I'm going in with Crush from Anastasia Beverly Hills, let's see. To line my lips, I am using my favorite lip pencil, this one is from MAC. 
it's just a nude pink after lining my lips i feel like i'm giving them life again because after creamy formulas and powders and stuff my lips are pretty much gone so now they are looking fine, they are looking juicy again, and we can finally move on to lipstick. As I was saying, I am going in with Crush by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't promise you that I won't be changing my mind in going in with Ludwig because I love that lipstick so much, but let's give this one a shot. Okay, so this is really, really rosy, but I actually kind of like it. I think I'm gonna keep it. I'm going to spray my face once again with the Fix Plus by MAC and I will be right back. Just a quick update, like the pink shade wasn't really working for me and something that really happens to me with matte lipstick, especially in the light shades, is that my lips aren't super full so once the lipstick dries, all those little marks on my lips just makes everything look not flattering at all and it makes me look like I have the driest and chappiest lips ever so yeah, that wasn't flattering so I ended up going in with the Huda Beauty liquid matte lipstick in bombshell hi again we have reached the end of this video this is the end makeup look I am in love with it as you have probably noticed by now I usually don't work with cool tones I prefer warmer tones because I feel like they are a little bit easier to work with and overall they are just more flattering to me personally but I am in love with how this look came out I love how all of the shades that I have on my face work together and I just feel like everything merged together really well and it resulted in this gorgeous makeup look I love this and to be honest this is the kind of makeup look that you can rock whenever, whatever this is not just for Valentine's Day but if you want to wear this for Valentine's Day you are going to be sexy and fierce so looking plus you're going to look hot as hell so that's a plus <laughs> but anyways if you like this video don't forget to leave it a like and also to subscribe to my channel because it's an amazing way of helping me grow my channel also if you want to see more from me i've been a lot more active on instagram so i will leave my instagram down below in, in case you guys want to check it out bye and i hope to see you in my next video